praying for the dolly. She started declaring the prayer now. She even to kidnap the mother for God to answer her prayer. We have to trust God, yes. church, and not play God. Yeah. God knows. God knows that you're real. Amen? The determination of a Christian's obedience or the pathway to being a disciple. Now, in the temptation that God, Jesus, was going through in the wilderness, the story that you heard about this little girl in her prayer, that she was um, asking for things. How many of us ask for things when you need and it's things that we want? God never did answer. And you blame God because you never have. You see, like, there was babies, uh, the girl was young and not understanding, um, or was uh, properly equipped to understand those prayers that she was asking for. And as Christians, for us, at the beginning, you're praying and you're praying, and you feel like you're not getting an answer. You feel like God's not there, but there's a process, church of your relationship with God. I know some pastors of mine, they ask God and He delivers exactly on the money. Pastor, your relationship in praying and in fasting and reading the Word. It separates them from the things of the world and the noise of the world to be in a personal place with the Holy Spirit. So, in the message this morning, there is a, a, a people that are young in their relationship with God. You might be 50 or 60 or 80, it doesn't matter. If you're just getting into a relationship with God and understanding or trying to get the equip for the equip, equipment that you need or the strategy that you need or the process that you need to process to get God to understand what you need is to have a relationship with Jesus, is knowing the Word of God to overcome Satan's temptation. He will tempt you. Amen? Amen. He will tempt you to ask of things that what you want. We need to ask God what He wants. Mm -hmm. It's not I, 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 I. It's like a, you know, going down, you gambling, and you pull on the gun, and you're looking for all the strawberries. And some of you getting all lemons. <laughs> we don't want lemons, amen. We want God's blessings, amen. So we look at the newborns, and some of us are struggling because we don't understand in our prayers. You see, it's not your prayers; it's your relationship with Jesus Church. Because when you get a relationship, if you ask Him anything in His name, and you have a relationship, He will answer you quickly, yes. or He will speak to you. Some of you, God is speaking to you, but you're not listening. Mm -hmm. Anybody heard what I said? So just listen to her. God is talking to you, but you're not listening. You're listening mm -hmm. to my granddaughter. God is speaking to us this morning. Amen, church? God is speaking to us. Some of us are struggling. Our relationship with God. So right now I'm speaking to those who got you who are struggling right now. I'm talking about the newborn Christians. But when I when I came to church, I was all surfer and I was in the world and I only like Jesus when I need something or when I'm in trouble. Why do you like that when you're a newborn Christian? Amen. Only when you're in trouble you like pray. But everything good, God bless you with a car. You don't need Jesus. I am Jesus. <laughs> Anybody making any sense to any newborn Christians in here? Amen. Amen. Turn with me. First Peter chapter two, verse two. 
talking about the new born babies. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, declares that God's word is essential to the believers as milk, as of newborn Christians. God's word is essential as newborn babies. We need milk. That milk, church, is a nourishment that God is speaking in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. You guys read that? It's the newborn Christians with the milk. Amen? But it is the nourishment that a baby needs when you're a newborn baby, a newborn Christian in Jesus Christ. It is the milk that gives us nourishment. Amen, church? The milk, like fresh manna, the bread of God in the wilderness is a time of maturity. You go from the newborn Christian with the milk to help you, to nourish you, and as you get a closer relationship with God, you get more understanding to God to equip you who you are in your relationship with Jesus. The closer you get to Him, the, the, the better your life gets. The closer you get to Jesus, the better your life gets. Amen? Amen? No matter what's around you, no matter what the strategies of the devil, try to put a snare around you or by you, that's not going to affect you. Jesus overcame the snares because he was equipped with the word of God. It is written. Not going to affect Jesus. Amen? Amen, church? Amen. God's word is the key to spiritual nourishment to help you from temptation. God's word is the nourishment that we need when Satan comes and tempts you. will come. Amen? If you can tempt Jesus, he's going to come see you too. He's a spirit without a body. Amen, church? He's a spirit without a body. He will come and tempt you in the wilderness. Whatever your weakness is, as long as you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you're going to get more weakness because he's going to use your weakness to shut you down. Mm. That's his strategy. He's going to use your weakness, and he knows your weakness. He knows you love sweet bread. Mm -hmm. He'll cut you down. We need to be equipped this morning with God's word. Amen, church? Amen. We need to be equipped with God's word. The Holy Spirit can help us process that. The Holy Spirit that is in you, as I'm speaking, there's a connection. It help you determine and understand what you need to do or what you already are doing already in your life. What you need to do or what some of you already are doing in your life. Everybody's not on the same level or the same ladder. Some of you look on the lower ladder when you have a small area, it's, it's your relationship with God. How much you're putting in in the Word, how much you're putting in in prayer. Yes. You need that daily bread for, for spiritual nourishment. Amen, church? Amen. So the story about the girl's prayer leads me to the second temptation. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written, Again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. A girl's prayer, she was tempting Jesus. Jesus, the next year, Mara, you better answer my prayer, then give me one daughter. You mentioned us? We cannot tempt the Lord thy God with what we want. The girl was tempting God with the mother of Mary. <laughs> you gotta trust God and you cannot play God. 
Come on, church. Amen. We're going to trust God and not play God. Can I get amen? Amen. amen. You cannot tempt God with a specific time and a place for what you want. That means we need to trust God and not play God, church. Don't tempt God, the Lord, and our Savior. Now to those, I'm going to shift the message, to those that are married, you will be tempted. Mm -hmm. You know, plenty of times that I've talked in church about uh, my relationship with Pastor Lucy, stuff that I learned from my past, that God has equipped me because the temptation does come. And many times that I have proven my reputation to my wife, when these women, beautiful women, give me their phone number and their apartment number, and I would give them to her, and she would like to, she's all pissed off, and I don't blame her, but. Who's this? Who, what do you mean? Where's your apartment? So she's all, she's all overwhelmed, right? With the temptation of what I gave her. But I'm telling her that because I love her, I have no hidden agenda. I'll give her the number and the apartment number of that girl. And there's many girls, I'm talking to a married couple, that you will be tempted. You will be tempted. Not only with, with, with women, but other things as well. Whatever you're going through, whatever your temptation, Satan knows, knows, knows your weakness. You will tempt you. Speak it to all men. The temptation in your man will come. The only way I will overcome the word of uh, temptation is by the word of God. Amen. The only way I can overcome those girls, those beautiful girls in their numbers, I'm not saying that my wife is not beautiful, she's all gorgeous. She's amazing. Jesus. The only way I can overcome them temptation is my love for God and my love for my wife. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, The Jesus. only way that I can overcome the temptation of these beautiful girls is I love God in all my heart and I love my wife. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But now I love my wife. Mm -hmm. Stop. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Come on, church. Yep. That's right. Temptation is as well. Amen. Some of you that was married, you look back and the reflecting before you knew Jesus, your relationship was so far away from God that the temptation was there and the strategies of Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy your marriages. Mm -hmm. If you only knew then what you know now. If you only knew then what you know now. Mm. I was too married. I never know that. I'm speaking from experience, church. I was too married because I was in the world. I never knew a relationship with God and I had no relationship with the women that I met. Today I love. Amen. I honor God and I honor her. Praise Jesus. I hold my standards high. Amen. Amen. I have a proven reputation of integrity because of my relationship with God and my relationship with my God. But those of you who want to get married, you better listen up mm. before you get separated, before you even start. Mm -hmm. Make God number one. Amen. My two marriages, I was number one. So I lost everything. Oh, no, Lord, I need you. Help me. When we reach out, well, now we need Jesus. Yeah? Now we get in a relationship. When you need something, baby newborn on the milk Christian. We don't need a mother. We need a savior. Amen. Amen. Mama, I'm not going to get you nothing. You're a little. 
or your grandma, or whoever, whoever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaking to the married people this morning, you will be tempted. Some of you don't know. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you I counsel. Some of you I help. <clears throat> Because I speak from experience and I speak from love. And I take God's word very seriously and I take you seriously. I take your family seriously. I don't play games now when it comes to your family and the relationship with God and the relationship with the life of your husband. Especially your kids. You know, as Christians, we're all looking for love. We're all looking for love. As Christians. Pastor Lucy and I have been married for 18 years. Amen. Pastor Lucy and I have been married for 18 beautiful, wonderful years. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Amen. And I'm saying that boldly because if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here with her today. Amen. If it wasn't for God in my relationship with Jesus, but I made a commitment and I made my vow, I made it to God first and I made it to her. Amen. So if I reject her, I reject what God did me. Yes, amen. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's not about me, church. I died 28 years ago in prison. It's no longer I that live, but Christ lived through me. Yes. That lived the same God that lived through you. Eighteen beautiful and wonderful years. When I got married to my wife, when I put on the wedding ring, it stopped all the circulation. She the finger. She put them on. My eyes will put them on. When I put on the ring, it stopped all the circulation. You know what that means for me? That's very powerful for me. It shows me that I separate myself from all the women in the world and I cleave to my life. Amen. I separate myself from all the women in the world. I'll give it a full number again. You gotta know that I love it. Speak it to all you married people today. For those of you who want to get married, but so those of you that was married, listen to what I'm saying. Your relationship with Jesus, very important. It's the bread of God, fresh manna. So while you've been married all these years, the only thing that kept you guys together is God's word. Can I get an amen? amen? Married people, amen. 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 Stop all the circulation in my finger. There's two things I want to say about marriage. Two things I want to say about marriage. It takes hard work. Amen. It ain't easy. It takes hard work. Two work. It ain't easy. If you like get married, remember, it ain't easy. You gotta work it. If you don't wanna work, don't get married. <laughs> Stay single. <laughs> Love takes work, church. Love takes work. Put on the ring, you say no to all the other girls, and you say yes to your wife. This is church. Do you know that the greatest accomplishment when you tell a person 
I do. Mm. Greatest accomplishment is when you made an equipment, when I made an, a, a commitment, and I said, when I got married, I do. The only way this thing would have been successful or completed is God is in the midst and centered in our marriage. Amen. Love was never intended to be free. There's no free love. It costs you something, Pastor Shan. It costs you something. Love is not free. It's going to cost you something. Sacrifice. It's not about you anymore. It's going to cost you something. That's mean I got to die. It cost me something. Love is not free. You gotta work. It's hard work, church. Eighteen years. No circulation. <laughs> I had to drink some water. <laughs> Using circulation. <laughs> One thing I've learned in my marriage and your marriage as well, you cannot define love without the love of God in John 3, 16. Amen. The love costs something. Yep. Can I define love? Without John 3, 16, that God to love the world that he gave before the begotten son. And whoever believes in him, to my parents, but have it next to He sacrifices. You need to sacrifice. Amen. Your will over to God. Your will over to your wife or your husband. It takes work. Sacrifice. You need the word. John 3 16. The God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You cannot love without giving son. You cannot love, church, without giving some of yourself. Without God giving His only begotten Son, His heart to love and giving back. If there wasn't a, a Savior, a mentor that God has given us through His Son Jesus Christ, a sacrifice of it costs something. It costs something. You cannot love without giving something. You love your wife, you love your dog, you love your house, you love eating Hawaiian food, mm -hmm. some of you love sushi babe. <laughs> mm. But the most important thing we should sort on a daily basis is the daily prayer. Amen. It's going to cost us something first. Mm -hmm. You have to die. Mm -hmm. So I can live through you. That's when I have to die to my flesh and I have to come close to the relationship I have with Jesus. You have to make time in your relationship with God. You have to make time with your family and your lovers. 
some of you, if you look back at, at the strategies of the devices of Satan that kept you in a wilderness, that separated you from your family, look at the devices. You can learn from your mistake. I learned from two marriages of my mistakes. I learned. I'm better equipped than I was now, and I understand now that today it cost me something. It's going to cost you something. Are you ready to sacrifice? Are you ready to kill your life? Most of all, to God the Father and your family. It's a sacrifice. It's going to cost you something. Love God in all your heart, church. First and foremost, you will start to see the blessing and the relationship you have with God. You will start to see the time and the equipment that you will need today for the rest of your life, whether you're married, or you're being married, or you want married to support. The message is that to equip you, remember that what was sacrificed for all of us is Jesus Christ. It costs him something. So we can have a relationship with God the Father through the Son Jesus Christ. So if I said anything to offend anybody here this morning, I humble myself before you and ask all of you to please forgive me. Amen. Especially to First Lady Lucy. God has given me. Now if you have forgiven me, the good Lord has forgiven me also. As I say in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.